The Chesapeake Bay area, there's a lot of boaters, there are bird watchers, there's Fisherman's Island, a nature sanctuary. This is really kind of a tourist, a fun area. People are going there to relax, they're going with their families. The last thing they would expect is to find a suitcase with a human body in it. It was the start of the summer tourist season, which is huge for Virginia Beach, and getting that kind of negative publicity of bodies washing up in suitcases was something they did not need. Six days later, the student was on Fisherman's Island in the middle of the Chesapeake Bay, which is a nature preserve. And she saw a dark green Kenneth Cole suitcase. She was curious what could be contained inside, and she actually pulled a little bit of the black trash bag out of the suitcase. There was such a strong odor of decomposition that she immediately stopped and notified the refuge workers. The police, they've been expecting this, because after the first Kenneth Cole bag with the legs, they suspected there was going to be more. It was transported to the medical examiner's office in Norfolk, and that's where we actually viewed what the contents inside. Inside the suitcase would be the torso and the head of a male. The torso was still attached with the arms and the head. The head was wrapped in what looked like a medical blanket. The face was somewhat identifiable, but it had been submerged for a while, so extremely bloated. The medical examiner is able to determine that the victim's been shot multiple times. There are a couple of gunshot wounds in the torso area and one through the head. There were two bullets that were recovered from the body, wad cutter bullets. And wad cutter bullets are not typically used by the average person, but they are used for target practice. And it became a very big local story. A student discovered a suitcase near Fisherman Island. Inside, a human head. It's getting a lot of coverage. It's the second suitcase in a week found near the Chesapeake Bay Bridge Tunnel, and the second one containing body parts. And everybody was waiting for the rest of the body to turn up. Well, the third suitcase was found on May 16, 2004, in the water by uh, a fisherman. He saw the suitcase floating in the water. This third suitcase that had been in the water the longest did have some growth on it from floating in the water for so long. This suitcase contained the pelvis, so from the waist down to above the knees. Authorities realize they have to figure out who it is. Anytime you find a unknown body, the first thing you're going to do is look into missing person cases to see if the profile matches anyone who's currently missing. Because of the naval bases in the area, they're checking military records. They're checking everything they can possibly think of to figure out who this person is. One of the policemen uh, working on it came up with the idea of getting a sketch artist in. I immediately took photographs to our sketch artist, and she was able to do a sketch for us, and we eventually released it to the media. We're hoping maybe this will give us a, an edge and maybe identify him sooner. Right now, he's just... John Doe. May the 21st, Sue sees the picture on TV of a sketch that they had done to find out who this person was. Sue had been getting out of the shower one morning. The television was on, and as she was getting out, toweling off, she looks at the TV. This is a sketch of the body that washed ashore near the Chesapeake Bay Bridge Tunnel this month. He belongs to somebody. I mean, he's got loved ones. She thinks, oh my god, that looks like Bill. Sue was pretty sure that it was Bill McGuire. This is John and Sue Rice, Bill McGuire's good friends. Bill and John had been friends since their early Navy days. Bill was friends with Sue as well. Melanie knew Sue. The couples had vacationed together. Sue immediately calls her husband to take a look, and he's not so sure it's Bill. But Sue's convinced it is, in fact, and says, please call Crime Stoppers. He was very good friends with Mr. McGuire. He told me that Mr. McGuire lived in Woodbridge, New Jersey. He was married to Melanie McGuire, and they had two small children. He wanted to know more about the dynamics of Bill, why I thought it could be Bill. And the only way that I thought it could be Bill is that, yeah, he's missing, too. John Rice had spoke to Cindy Lagash, who is William McGuire's sister. 
I got a call from Cindy. She said, John, is Billy there? And I, I said, no, he's not. What's going on? And she said, well, Bill and Melanie got in an argument, and he left, and he hadn't been heard from. He said he was leaving, and he wasn't coming back. My husband was full of bluster when it came to stuff like that. He would say things like that all the time. I didn't actually believe it was the last time I was ever going to see my husband. William McGuire had, in fact, vanished. Mr. Rice and his wife, Mrs. Rice, eventually agreed to come down to the police department in Virginia Beach and view some photos. Bill had a little red mark right here. And that's what I kept zoning in on when I saw the picture. That's exactly what I zoned in on. I mean, I've known Bill for 22 years. I kept seeing that, and I was pretty certain that it was Bill. Once we had a name and uh, approximate age, we ran him through our computer system. He ran a check on Bill McGuire, and he found that McGuire had been arrested in Virginia for a reckless driving charge in the 1980s. His fingerprints were on file already, which made it a lot easier. And they're very quickly able to confirm that the fingerprints matched. The man in the suitcases was identified as 39-year-old William McGuire of Woodbridge, New Jersey. So according to Melanie, she just thinks her husband is missing. But she is about to get the news that will change her life forever. And I said, I'm sorry to tell you, ma'am, that William is deceased. And I just, I just burst into tears. Now they've solved the mystery of who the man in the suitcase is. The big question is, how the hell did he get there? Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.